Uh, can we just take a look around the room? This is real life, people. Like twice as many people that we've had here in a year. Yes, clap if you like. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I don't know if anyone else is feeling just slightly awkward, like, ooh, people again, like close together. Um, I, this, this, so this is pretty special. This is loosened restrictions for the evening. This is the first time we've been able to do it. If we want to be able to be invited back to McMenamin's, it's important that we be really conscientious about our mask hygiene. So if you're not actively eating or drinking, if you wouldn't mind putting your mask on, that would make me really happy. And then I'll be able to see you here next month. All right. I'm going to get off my um, soapbox and we'll start the program. I'm Shannon Kelly. Thank you for being here. Welcome to Pub Talk. I am so glad to be here with special thanks to our MC sponsor, OSU Cascades. Uh, OSU Cascades has a special message for you tonight. Student interns from OSU Cascades Innovation CoLab can help you ramp up. They can take on marketing projects, website, software development, event management, and more. They can help your business or nonprofit find investment opportunities and grants. And we know they work really well with startups because almost every one of them has launched their own company. So for more information, you're going to contact Adam Krenicki or you can go to osucascades.edu backslash co-lab. Go Beavers. We are able to host Pub Talk tonight, both live and in person, virtually. Thank you to our uh, generous event sponsor. So this is my favorite part of the night every night, every time. I'm going to bring up Brad Garriguez, Chief Marketing Officer with Providence Health Plan. Where are you, Brad? A little bit shorter. All right. Well, good evening, and thank you for having us. Providence is really excited about the opportunity to sponsor these pub talks. I had the uh, the opportunity to attend last month's pub talk for the very first time, and it was just fascinating to learn about what businesses are doing, what entrepreneurs are doing in our communities. And for my wife and I, I think some of you may know this, but we recently just relocated to Central Oregon, and so we're now really a part of the community. And for us, these pub talks are a really great way to get to know you guys, uh, know the businesses in the community a little bit better. And to keep it all in the family just a little bit more, uh, she just registered her business as a member of EDCO. Ooh, so. <laughs> so I know Julianne has shared with you a lot of great things that Providence does and, and what makes Providence a great organization, so I'll keep it really brief. But uh, for me, it's really about our mission, uh, the thing that's kept it kept me at Providence for 24 years now, is that we really have a mission-oriented organization. We've been in the Pacific Northwest for over 160 years. For us, it's about serving our communities, particularly those that are the most poor and vulnerable in our communities and delivering really high quality health care for, for everyone, but especially the poor and vulnerable. As part of that, our core belief around health care is that health is a human right. And the nuance in my comment is that it's health, not just health care. And while we're a health care company, health care is only a component of what, what we need as a community and what we need as individuals. Health is about physical and mental health. It's about emotional health. It's about your spiritual health, your financial health. It's about the health of our planet that we live in, or live on, I should say. Uh, so climate change, it's a real important aspect of everything uh, that we do as a community. And so Providence has been a very strong advocate at state, federal, and even global levels in promoting this concept of health being a human right. And so with that, I just want to say thank you. Uh, really interested, uh, and congratulations to the speakers uh, that will be coming tonight. Want to learn more about the community in which we live, so thank you again. Brad, you are a delight. <laughs> you are a true delight. Brad, I feel like... If I ever can't make it, I'm calling you first because you really, you covered a lot in a very short amount of time. Thank you very much. Um, all right, next up, Taylor Thompson, Vice President, Commercial Baking Officer at Columbia Bank. Where are you, Taylor? I guess I'll just go. Uh, thanks for having us tonight. Um, we really appreciate EDCO. We appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention, I, a couple months ago I mentioned talking about the PPP program, the Paycheck Protection. At that time, you know, I was kind of encouraging anybody to go ahead and get in, get your app in if you hadn't already done it. Well, so today I'm here to tell you and talk about, you know, you, you've probably already done that. And if you did your PPP one in 2020, 
You don't want to procrastinate getting your forgiveness put in. Um, that is coming up pretty soon. Um, most folks, that's going to be between August and September. If you wait to, if you procrastinate and not do this, um, you could potentially not get that forgiven, and you would have a very short timeline to get that paid back. Because if your loan was a two-year loan, you would have used 16 months of it in deferment, and now you have an eight-month period to pay back whatever size loan you have. That could be a very big payment. So just a heads up there from Columbia Bank. Um, we would love to talk with you if you have any loan or banking needs. We're located downtown on 3rd, or excuse me, on the corner of Franklin and Bond, and also out on 3rd Street by Blockbuster. Thanks again for having us tonight. We really appreciate everyone here tonight and coming out. Have a good evening. Thanks, Taylor. I'm glad you brought up the Blockbuster. It's a real hot scene there. I don't know if you guys have been by. I just went for the first time this week. Full parking lot. The entire West Coast was visiting. There was a line to take pictures. So if you're going to go, go early. It's basically the Smith Rock of 3rd Street. <laughs> All right, next up, Jordan Smith, President and CEO of Vlog Systems. Come on, Jordan. Thank you. Hey, my name's Jordan Smith with Vlog Systems. Happy to be one of the four sponsors here at Hub Talk. Um, title sponsors, I guess is what they call us. Thank you, I was too fast. <laughs> um, and I just want to bring something up that I thought was kind of it just went so quick and no one responded. Aaron, is this, are we PG-13 here? Because that opens a lot of doors for me if that's the case. No? It was a okay. half swear, Jordan. No, what? It was a half swear. I didn't I didn't, I didn't fully execute it. Um, hey, so VLOC Systems, we do uh, business IT services and consulting. So if you have um, crazy growth right now in your business or you want crazy growth right now in your business and you just don't know exactly what tools to put in place to accomplish that, we have a couple of members on our team that play that, that CIO, Chief Information Officer role, that help you like realize how you can communicate one person to another within your business in a really effective and productive manner, um, but secure, safe, and fast. Uh, so that's, a, that's something we love to do, is get together with our, with our partners, with our clients, and like strategize. Just the next couple of years, like what can we put in place, what can we do, what can we build that really makes the thing you're trying to do sing and hum and outperform your competition. So um, if you're looking for that role, you feel like you don't have that role in your business, that is for hire, that, that VC, we call them virtual CIOs, uh, chief information officers, and just somebody to sit with you and build that strategy with you so you know kind of what to do um, on the technology side. Um, other than that, have a great time tonight, guys. It's great to see you all, and like twice as many of you tonight than normal, so this is awesome. And uh, thanks again to Edco. Back to you. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, Jordan. All right, uh, it is the whiskey man next. Kurt Barker, attorney, attorney and partner at Carnot Peterson. Kurt, where are you? I don't, oh, oh my God, you snuck right up on me. What kind of attorney are you? I'm an employment attorney. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> Apparently, I'm a whiskey drinking attorney too, which is great. Um, I think it's incumbent on the last sponsor to be brief, so don't worry. We're going to go real fast. Kurt Barker with Carnot Peterson. I just thought I'd take pause to remind everybody who we are. Um, our firm's been in the town for gosh. Traces back over 80 years. Um, I think we first got started sponsoring Pub Talk because of our love for the entrepreneurial spirit of Edco and our, our love for working with startups. But with 15 some lawyers, there's not much we can't do for your startup or your business. Um, that goes from employment law to you know formation, litigation, to intellectual property. We're here for you. Don't be shy to reach out and ask how we can work together. Thank you for being here. It's great to see you all. Oh, it's great to see you, Kurt. <clears throat> Speaking of entrepreneurial spirit, we have some new EDCO members to announce tonight. Heather Garrigas with Keller Williams Realty, Portland Premier. Uh, Mission Farms, Muggenberg Farms, Inc., Portland Seed Fund. Strategic Business Solutions, Inc., The Run Experience, and Washington Trust Bank. And we also have an upgraded member, Paul Freed. Paul, good job. Fun fact, there's also an open election for the EDCO Board of Directors. So whether you're an EDCO member or you're still thinking about it, uh, you can learn more by reaching out to Director of Membership Heidi Hausner. And the deadline for nominations is June 3rd, which 
believe it or not, is like a few days away. So month six, here we go. All right, next, I would like to introduce the Bend Venture Conference Growth Stage Track Fund Manager, Jen Lynch. Jen is not new to the Pup Talk stage. In fact, she's one of my favorite folks to collaborate with. But she has judged early stage competition here for the last two years and has supported BVC with her Portland Seed Fund hat on for many years prior to that. I'm going to keep going. Oh um, this year, she takes on another new role with the Angel Conference, and she's here to tell us more about what to expect and some exciting changes the investment side is taking. So welcome back, Jen. Take it away. Thank you. Um, thank you. Hi. So my name is Jen Lynch. I'm a managing uh, partner at Portland Seed Fund, but more interestingly, I am now the managing partner of the Ben Venture Conference Growth Ooh. Stage Fund for 2021. And uh, I have been an investor in this fund for the last several years, um, and I know some of you from there. We've made a number of exciting investments over the last few years. Last year, if you remember, um, they were Pet Hub, which was, uh, they're a startup based in Idaho that sells um, smart pet licenses to um, county uh, pet licensing divisions. Um, these pet tags have a QR code on the back such that when your dogs get lost, somebody can just boop the QR code and see everything about your animal and get, get it home faster. Um, we also made an investment in a very strange company based in Washington State that helps um, uh, companies cut pipes to the correct length and correct size, which is a hilarious um, multi-hundred million dollar business that nobody have you have ever heard of. I know that you haven't. You can pretend like you have, but um, you have not. They're called Pipe Server, and they are, of course, crushing it. Um, we are uh, going to be putting this fund together in the fall the same way that we do every single year. If you are an accredited investor, you can invest um, in this fund. We sell um, shares of the fund for a minimum investment. You can buy one. You can buy 30. It does not matter. Um, we get together as a group. Uh, I don't know, every week Riley knows. I think it's like some number of times and we go through the companies that have made it through a, a screening process six times. Um, that was really fun last year when no one had seen anybody in like nine months just to go into a room and be with other human beings. So it's fun doing it just to make friends and meet new people. We will be accepting applications um, for the startups that are interested in pitching the growth stage fund, the early stage fund, and the impact track fund starting in the fall. Um, look for those buttons to go live on Gust in uh, August, September, and um, the fund will start getting put together around that same time. If you have questions or are interested in investing in the fund, you can find me um, at Portland Seed Fund. You can find me at Bend V cfund.com. I'm going to say it again, bendvcfund.com. Um, there's a form there that you can fill out and get more information, and we'll have docs available soon. But I hope that you will tell your friends and um, come join our group this fall. It's going to be a great deal of fun, and we're going to find a very cool company and give them a lot of money. It's going to be really great. Love it. Thanks, Jen. <clears throat> We learned a lot at BBC last year. I would like my brain exploded after two days of that. I was like, pipes? What? So interesting. Um, all right, so for all of you virtual attendees, folks watching at home, on the right side of your screen is a chat bar. So you'll type your questions and comments in the chat bar. They'll find their way to me, and that's how you'll be part of our live program tonight. And for those of you here at McMenamins, hopefully you remember how to do this. You just raise your hand. You just raise your hand. Yeah. None of you remember? Okay, you got, okay, 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 we'll be fine. Um, all right, so on to tonight's pitching companies provided by supporting sponsors. First up, Bend Broadband is honored to sponsor Pub Talk and proud to be a part of the Central Oregon community. Check out bendbroadband.com. They have a great new introductory offer for business internet starting at $39.95 when bundled. And Central Oregon Association of Realtors, COAR, is proud to announce Debbie Martirano of Remax Key Properties as the 2021 Realtor of the Year. Congratulations, Debbie. What a time to be a real estate agent, huh? I mean, I'm excited for you people. All right, pitching company number one, Mission Farm CBD helps people feel good again naturally by crafting premium hemp-based products sourced from their partner farm in the Napa Valley of hemp and formulated to treat specific conditions. Mission Farm CBD has succeeded in created, creating a brand that consumers trust and love in the midst, in the midst of an unregulated and fractured market. Now in their second year of business, they are poised for continued growth in the market that is expected to triple in size by 2025. Here to tell us more and how we can help is Ben Joyce, CEO of Mission Farms. Yeah. 
Hi, I'm Ben Joyce. I am CEO and co-founder of Mission Farms CBD, where it is our mission to help people feel good again all naturally. And uh, we do that by uh, crafting these premium CBD products sourced right here in what we like to call the Napa Valley of Hemp. And they provide uh, targeted, powerful relief for people uh, who are struggling with sleep, pain or anxiety or stress. Uh, we were founded actually by a handful of families right here in Bend. Uh, each of us had experienced a variety of benefits from CBD and several of our founders had actually uh, had extensive experience in hemp farming as well. And we saw real opportunity in the CBD market, but uh, we also saw some problems. Uh, for example, uh, as was mentioned, uh, the CBD market is an unregulated market. So consumers had a lot of difficulty knowing where their CBD was coming from, whether it was safe or not. Uh, often products were using really low-grade ingredients rather than premium organic ingredients. And uh, very few companies were actually leaning into the cutting-edge science that was happening with cannabinoids. So uh, the products were marginally effective. And uh, we knew that we could solve these problems. And so uh, today we're able to say to our customers, the CBD in this product comes from this farm right here in Tumalo. It's organically farmed. It's tested four times. It's safe. You can trust it. Uh, we also use uh, premium organic ingredients in our products. So uh, using our products is as much like uh, a trip to the spa as it is a visit to the doctor. Um, and we also, we, we really lean into the cutting edge science that's happening in cannabinoid research so that we can produce the most effective products on the market. Uh, before we launched in December 2018, uh, we knew we were on the right track. I remember when I got a, a phone call from one of my friends here in town named Chris and his mother-in-law was visiting and she was in severe back pain. She was flat on her back on the floor and. I said, hey, I know you guys are trying to develop that uh, relieve CBD oil. Could I try some for my mother-in-law? And I said, absolutely, he drove some over. And uh, he gave some to his mother-in-law and the rest of the family headed out to the farmer's market uh, here in Bend. Well, about 30 minutes later, I got a call from Chris and he said, hey, you'll never believe who just walked up to me at the farmer's market. I'm like, who? He said, it's my mother-in-law. She's laughing, she's smiling, she's playing with the kids, she's feeling great, that stuff really works. Well, he called me up about a week later and he said, my mother-in-law has reduced her opioid usage by 60% in one week using your oil. Now, we all know how significant that is. Uh, we have an opioid crisis in our country right now as people are addicted to harmful medications trying to treat pain. We have the overprescription of anxiety and depression meds with horrible side effects. There's tens of millions of people who are using sleep aids that are basically the equivalent of tranquilizers. And, and these people are looking for an all natural way to handle these issues. Well, at Mission Farms, we help people manage their health and their happiness, but all naturally, without side effects. We have a, a variety of products from oils and mints to creams and gels to uh, different bath products, and they really fall into four main categories. We have our Relief CBD line of products, which treat pain and inflammation, uh, our Rest CBD line of products for sleep, and then we have our Relax CBD line of products, which are designed specifically for stress and anxiety. And finally, we have our, our Pure line, um, which is more of a general use, kind of a, a multivitamin, so to speak, when it comes to CBD. And we sell these products, all of them, all of them are available on our website at missionfarmcbd.com and actually 95% of our sales are through our website uh, direct to consumer. Now the, the CBD market has a lot of promise you might be aware of but there's also some challenges. It was about a five billion dollar market in 2020. It's expect, expected to triple at least by 2025 so there's a lot of opportunity there but uh, there are some unique challenges. Marketing is really hard. We're blocked in uh, most of the direct-to-consumer channels. Uh, banking and credit card processing is challenging. When you can get it, it's really expensive. I remember uh, when our credit card processor, the only one in the U.S. who was carrying CBD companies early on, when they dropped us in every CBD company, and our only opportunities for, uh, for collecting money were blockchain technology two years ago, 
or overseas, like really sketchy credit card processing. And so we were pinching pennies. So we did not have an office in Bend, but we had an office in Europe just so we could process uh, orders. Uh, so there's been, there have been a lot of hurdles we've had to overcome. I remember that first quarter uh, of business in 2019, I was a little discouraged because we had only done about 35,000 in revenue. But we kept jumping those hurdles, and by the fourth quarter, uh, we did 400,000 in revenue. And our growth continued in 2020. Uh, we did over a million in revenue, 10% profitability. That was about 40% growth year over year. And, and that was especially encouraging for us for a couple of reasons. First, because uh, we started this uh, company with just $165,000. So hitting that a million dollar mark in revenue in year two was very encouraging. And then also 2020 was a really difficult year in the market. Uh, it was called a massive extinction event for small CBD companies, but we didn't just uh, survive, uh, we thrived in, in 2020. So uh, where, are we, where are we today? Um, we are a brand that thankfully has earned some national recognition. We have about 12,000 customers spread among all 50 states. 80% of our reviews are five-star reviews, and, and that tells us that our products are really working for people. Um, they're helping people feel good again all naturally. And uh, we also continue to be a real leader um, when it comes to developing products that incorporate some of this cutting edge cannabinoid science so that they're the most effective products on the market. While we do have uh, this national reach, uh, we are still very much a local company. Uh, Farming in Tumalo, uh, processing in Prineville, manufacturing in Eugene, and our core team is right here in Bend, and we've grown to uh, five employees, and we're looking to add a six employee now. Uh, we, we feel like the future is bright for us and for the CBD market, uh, certainly because of our position in the market, but uh, most of all, I'd say because of the stories that keep rolling in every, uh, every week that remind us that, that we're accomplishing the mission we set out to accomplish. I got an email not long ago from a wife and mother, and uh, she had ordered our REST CBD oil for her husband who served in our armed forces, and he suffers from PTSD, and she said, I wanted to say thank you because I gave it to him, and he slept through the night for the first time in 10 years. And she said, you don't know what a difference that makes. Those stories encourage us and they keep us going, um, encourage us to keep jumping those hurdles. And they remind us that we are on that right mission of helping people manage their health and their happiness all naturally. Uh, we want to uh, invite you to join us on what we think is a really exciting mission. And there's a number of ways you could participate. First is we'd love for you to try our products. Uh, we have our uh, number one selling product, our Relief CBD gel, available for you to try right there. Also have a coupon for 50% off for Edco people. Uh, so you can go to our website and use that. We'd love for you to uh, try our product. Second, we would love your help in getting in front of new people. That's our biggest challenge because we're blocked in so many marketing channels. So could we do a giveaway with you on social media? Uh, could we uh, be in your shop here in town? Could you introduce us to a retailer or a distributor? If there's any way you can help us get in front of new customers, that would be wonderful. And uh, thirdly, we are looking to hire a head of e-commerce. So if you know someone who'd be great fit, uh, please send them our way. And uh, in all three of those ways, we really invite you to join us on what we feel is a thrilling mission, which is helping people feel good again and doing it all naturally. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. What a great pitch. What a great pitch. I'm totally in. I'm going to try every product. You did a beautiful you job. Um, I, you, so you mentioned there's this like cutting edge cannabinoid technology, all these kind of new yep. developments. I know just a little bit, but I want, like, can you share an example yep. of something that's been really helpful as, like, you're excited about? Yeah, absolutely. So there's really over 100 different cannabinoids in the hemp plant, and so most people know about THC and CBD. There's over 100 more of those. And so as technology develops, both in developing um, specific trains, strains of hemp high and other cannabinoids, and the technology develops to isolate those, then, then scientists are be able to, being able to do studies on them. And so there are new cannabinoids that are coming out. We're going to be releasing a line of uh, products called Full Spectrum Plus, which are boosted with other minor cannabinoids um, that are specially effective for particular issues, whether it's gut inflammation or anxiety or other things. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. 
Okay, I have lots more questions, but I think these folks probably do too. Does anyone here in the room in front of me have a question for Ben? Oh, yes. Okay, he wants to partner. Great. I love that. It's a little bit more of a critical look because, to be honest, mm -hmm. I get an email from a huge company yeah. every other week. And frankly, they all say the same stuff that you do. Mm -hmm. So, not saying that you're not in the Napa of movie production, but like, what is the defensibility of space? Like, how am I supposed to determine what is an all natural, all organic piece of space? What is the defensibility in the space? Yeah. How are you to determine one CBD product from another? Yeah. yeah. Can you elaborate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was really hard a couple of years ago. It's getting easier, easier and easier, especially as, um, as companies publish the testing that they do. So for example, uh, we test the soil before we plant, we test the plants before we harvest, we test the extract from the plants, and then we test the final products in order to show our customers, here you go, there's, there's, there's nothing dangerous in here, this is all natural and it is healthy. That's the best place and I think the first place to look is uh, for companies that are publishing um, all their test results on their products. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Any hey, other? Shannon, we've yes. got a question in the theater. Hit me. I was just wondering, um, do you have any, uh, does the CBD oil have any side effects or any, um, um, like, cost dependency? Mm. Yeah. Re yeah. I'll repeat the question. Should I repeat oh, the question? No, oh, okay. Okay, got it. Um, so yeah, really important question. Um, the only known side effect for CBD uh, that shows up uh, again and again is that it relaxes people. So um, there's actually a, a, um, a pharmaceutical drug that CBD that's for children, um, and it doesn't create any dependency. That's why a lot of people. That's why the market is growing because people are looking to it as a all natural solution without side effects. Right, like it or can't dependency. hurt. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any products that like? Do give you a little buzzy feeling? Just, uh, just wanted to, just want to ask for a friend. Like, so before, my mom wants to know. So before I got my root canal in December, I took more CBD than I've ever taken. Um, and that's a wild time, Ben. That is. <laughs> I'm gonna try it out. Um, okay. So any other questions here? Oh yes, Jordan. Jordan has heard that hemp farming can be rough on the soil. Can you speak to that? Um, so I haven't heard that. Uh, I haven't heard that before. Um, hemp farming um, is actually great for the environment and uh, largely because it uses so much less water than, uh, than hay farming does. And so um, the toll on our water system is reduced drastically by growing hemp, uh, hemp instead. Yeah and, it, it, yeah, and it will pull uh, a variety. If there is like bad stuff in the soil, it will pull that out of the soil, which is, which is good for the environment. But that's also why the testing is so important um, on the fields. Yeah. That's what we had discussed briefly last month. So yeah. Okay. Hey, Shannon, one more in the theater. Jordan needs some CBD. Yes. Hi, I'm Jay uh, from All Things Philly. And my question is, since you're in a new cutting edge, are you going to put it inside food, i.e., example? Lasagna? Can you actually speak a little closer to the microphone? We're having difficulty hearing you. Can you hear me now? A little better, yeah. All right. Get right up close <laughs> to it. My name is Jay I'm from All Things Philly. And I was wondering, since you're on the cutting edge, are you going to be putting it inside food products? Um, yeah, so will we be putting CBD inside of food products? We, uh, we do have mints right now, which is one edible, and um, we, aren't, we haven't yet put it in other food products, and here's the reason, because the absorption rate, when you, when you just swallow it rather than putting oil under your tongue or by some other means, the absorption rate is really low, and we want to provide our customers um, with the most effective products possible. Um, so mints, you, it actually, the CBD absorbs through your soft palate, so it's much more effective. We won't move into other edible products until we can guarantee a higher absorption rate, and we are working on that. 
So like if you drink the soda really slowly, <laughs> you like hold it in your mouth for a yeah, while. Okay. Push it around. I, I think yeah. that you're doing the right thing. Okay. Um, unless I have any burning questions here in the room, I think we're going to move on. Okay. Ben, yeah. amazing pitch. And thank you for bringing the samples. And please keep us posted. You, you, it's, it's great that you guys are doing so well. I'm glad to hear the update. have a wild time with some CBD, huh? All right, on to the next pitch, sponsored by SGA CPAs, who is honored to partner with EDCO in support of our local business community. SGA prides itself as being more than accountants. They are modern advisors with a collaborative strategy focusing on building wealth and sustainable business growth. Thank you to Amber Yates and SGA, also a Platinum EDCO board member. Amber, did you survive tax season? Amber, are you here? She's an, is she okay? Is she hydrated? Does she need some pizza? Okay, we're gonna take care of Amber. And also, Ferguson Wellman Capital Management is delighted to be a sponsor of Pub Talk. Ferguson Wellman is a privately owned investment advisory firm that designs and manage, manages customized investment portfolios for individuals and institutions. Ferguson Wellman and its division, West Bearing Investments, manages more than $7 billion for nearly 900 clients and have been serving clients in Central Oregon for more than 30 years. Thank you, Ferguson Wellman Capital. Belonging is shifting the way kids ma and families manage multi-home living for good. The heart of belonging lies in the benefit for kids and co-parents living in divorced or separated families, building a foundation of psychological health by fostering a sense of place and belonging, easing the transitioning between homes so kids and parents can positively enjoy the limited time that they have together. Here to tell us more about how this firsthand experience led her to co-founding Belonging is co-founder and freestyle innovator, Ann Cook. Ann, come on up. Let's see, is that good? All right. Thank you, Shannon, for that introduction. And thank you, Brian and Edco, for inviting me here for the debut of Belonging. My name is Ann Cook, and I'm the co-founder. Belonging is a pre-revenue company. And um, the heart of belonging, as Shannon mentioned, is supporting the psychological health of children and families who are living a multi-home lifestyle. Our core product um, is a portable closet that kids can use in managing this transition. This idea was birthed from my personal experience. When my boys were six and nine, their dad and I divorced. And although we put co-parenting at the very forefront of our co-parenting plan, and we got good reviews from our counselor, it was still really hard. Our kids were forced into living a life on the run and moving back and forth between our houses constantly. And the pain point for me was having our quality time sucked away in all of this transition. So in the mud of divorce, is where I had my first entrepreneurial thought. There's got to be a better way to do this. But my boys launched and went on with their lives and I thought, oh, I'm off the hook for this startup idea. I know how hard it is to start up a company. But that idea, like many of you know, just relentlessly kept poking at me. So here I am today. So I have a question for you. Think about your closet for a minute. Think about how much you wear that's in your closet. For most of us, it's like a subset of belongings, right? We have our favorite things. This year, for me, it was a pair of black leggings and my favorite hoodie when I was working from home. And for most of us in Bend, it's your favorite puffy. But these are the things, your go-to things, the things that make you feel at home, that make you feel comfortable. Well, this is the basic premise of belonging. Belonging was, our core product is the Love My Stuff portable closet. And this is created so kids can keep a subset of their belongings, the things that make them feel comfortable, that make them feel at home. Um, and we have an awesome video to show you. You guys are seeing it for the first time. Um, and it, it's the size of the um, largest piece of checkable luggage. Um, it can be hung in a closet or it can stand alone. Um, and it's kind of like an old steamer trunk, if you remember what those were. It has um, room for ultimate customization. Um, the products that we are creating to complement this are as unique as every child that's going to be using it. 
We found out in our research that some kids are super organized in their hangers and other ones are stuffers and they're on the go, right? So you can have it made all um, into shelves or you can have a hanging side and, a, um, and shelves as well. Um, the closet door is um, made for all those little things that get left behind. This is what drives kids and parents crazy, right? It's the cell phones, it's the chargers, it's the iPads, it's the favorite toy. We actually, in our research, found out that it's really important to have a locking pocket. So some kids are being um, transitioned with medications or when they get older that they want to have some money hidden or locked in there. And beyond storage is where the innovation for our product comes in, is in this panel. The panel is designed so that kids can plan their transition. They, um, it can have calendars, it can have checklists, it could even have a vision board. Um, and then the opposite side that you're seeing has a, um, a whiteboard where kids can take water-soluble markers and really express themselves. This product is unlike anything in the market, and unfortunately, that's true. What kids are currently using mostly are duffel bags, clamshell suitcases that open and they're really unorganized, um, laundry baskets, um, totes, right? Plastic totes. And what we found out is kids in divorced families, what they're using, or not divorced family in fo foster care, what they're using is garbage bags. So I want you to think about this for a minute. How do you feel when you're organized? Currently, 35 million um, families in the US are divorced, and another million are joining this group every year. To put that a different way, every 36 seconds, there is a divorce in the United States. Of the research we've done early on, um, we asked 200 people, and they would say that, said that they would pur our, purchase our product between $150 and $200. Um, so if you take that and you say, okay, maybe 66% of the market is transitioning, then our addressable market is $5.7 billion. Um, and the core of this product I want to just repeat again is, um, you know, the, pro the case is what we're selling, but the core of the product is the psychological health of children and families. Our product helps kids have a sense of belonging, a sense of ownership, a sense of responsibility, a sense of control in a world that feels totally out of control for them. And how are we gonna get these cases into their hands? We're gonna start with a pre-purchase campaign in Q4 of this year. Then we're gonna move to direct to sales, online third-party selling. And then finally, we'll add in some wholesaling. I've been in the sales and marketing industry for 20 years, and my co-founder, Nick, has been in corporate finance for over 17 years. And he's worked for companies like eBay, um, Michi Handbags, and um, Federal Express. Currently, he's working with a um, successful online distribution center. Our goal is to get a half a million of these bags in kids' hands in the next five years. Back in 2019, I um, was an alumni of COCC, of OSU Cascades, of the Ben Leadership Program. Um, I participated in the Chamber's Women's BDX Program, and all of these programs helped me to be here today. Um, I joined Opportunity Knox and the OSU CoLab in an effort to make this come to fruition. Adam Kiernicki and I worked hard to develop a, a team of advisors, of six advisors that have a breadth of experience from business development, sales and revenue management, sourcing, manufacturing, national branding, and mental health. I am so excited that we found a designer here in town, Motive Collective. They have over 20 years of experience with brands like Solomon, and Quicksilver. Um, currently, I'm so excited to announce that we have our first sales sample on the way. We're gonna do focus group research, and that's gonna inform our final design for our manufacturing kit. Now, the road ahead is gonna be paved, as many of you know, with lawyers, my lawyers here tonight, and we're going to have tooling and manufacturing and e-commerce. So currently, we're looking for the right fit partners to join us in our seed round of financing. 
And just as importantly, as Ben mentioned, it's getting the word out. So my ask for you tonight is to take the card that's on your table because I bet that everyone in this room knows at least one person that's living this lifestyle, right? We know, or you are personally. So text belonging.me, and you can even do it right now, get your phone out, text belonging.me to somebody you know that's living this lifestyle that, so they can jump on board and join our journey, or somebody that maybe would be able to help us get the word out or help us launch our company. And I'm so grateful for all of you being here tonight for the launch of Belonging, all of you here in the audience, all of you at home. You know, last pub talk, Roger mentioned that Bend was number 13 of the best small cities to start a company. And I'm a total testament that, of that tonight. It's the community chain of support that's brought me here tonight, ready and so excited to start a company that's gonna benefit the heart of our future. It's our kids. So let's make sure that wherever they go, they belong. Thank you so much. And well done. <laughs> Really well done. <laughs> I'm really impressed. Thank you. This Thank is you, just Shannon. an incredible, incredibly compassionate solution to something that exists. Divorce isn't good, it isn't bad. It's just what we happen to be doing right now. Yes. And this is incredible. So um, I really commend you. It's a great idea. Thank you, Shannon. What has been the biggest, like, I don't know, most exciting part of this process for you? Great question. Um, so in one of our focus groups interviews, um, I got to interview a family, and they live in a parallel parenting program. And the little boy, when he described to me what he was going to put in this case, I could totally see that he got it. I mean, and then his little sister, it validated, and you know, it, it's hard for me not to go to tears in this, but she, in a side conversation to her mom, said, Mommy, can I have one of these before we go back to Dad's house? When, when I see people using this product, it's, um, it's going to be the full Yeah, I'm, I am, I'm, I'm crying. I, I'm yeah. not divorced. I do not have children. I totally feel it. This is amazing. Okay, any questions from the audience? Wow, nothing. Okay, I have, oh, there, and there we go. Yes. Yes. I know that oftentimes for startup companies, identifying a way to have an impact at a corporate social institution is really sort of tough. Have you given any thought to how you could use these to help business models? Okay, huge compliments yeah. on your presentation. But have you thought about any sort of leveraging corporate responsibility to get these cases to kids in foster care? Where, where are you at with that? Yeah, Great 100 percent. In the research that we've done, and I spent actually a lot of time. I was when I was the director of sales at the DoubleTree. I'd run down on my lunch break with my clipboard, and I would interview the families that were standing to take their tubes back up, right up river. And that's where I found out that foster care really needs this product, and met people that were working in foster care. I reached out to every child and to the Division of Family Services. And our goal is in our pre-purchase campaign is to have people be able to purchase these for a child in foster care. We're creating these in a sustainable way so that they are gonna last multi-generation. Like you think about, you know, how do we do this sustainably? It's reduce, reuse, reuse, right? So the quality of this product is key for us so that it can be reused, so we can do a buyback program so that we can get them in the hands of kids in foster care. And, you know, I thought I needed it for my kids. The people that I've talked to in foster care, that's where it's at. Oh, this is going to be hugely impactful. I wonder if you could even set up your, like, direct online sales. It's like you can purchase one, but you can also purchase one and give one. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different opportunities there. Yeah, so beautiful. it's exciting. Okay, I had another question back over here. Yes. So it sounds like you're using products for kids, but it also sounds like there are a lot of opportunities for looking into other users. Any plans to look at other users for this aside from kids? That is such a great question, and thank you for asking. Yes, right? I mean, actually, even, even outside of divorced families, um, I was chatting with a gal yesterday, and she's like, I could use this for my son with all of his baseball stuff so it stays organized and in one place. Okay, and how many van lifers are there out there, right? <laughs> Raise your hand if you live a van life or you want to, right? So this is like, or, okay, here's one. 
How about the people, the boyfriend girlfriend situation where you're living between homes? <laughs> okay, I know that one well. And you know, you just need a subset of your belongings and they need to stay organized. Or living in the hotel, working in the hotel industry, how many business travelers are on the road? They check in on Monday, they leave on Thursday, and they leave their bag. How about they can just hang it up in their closet and not have to pack and unpack? Well, I think it's so interesting, too, because I imagine after you use a product like this for a while, you realize, like, you don't really need all that stuff that you have. So now people are going to start to pare down. And, and I think there's psychological implica- um, implications of that, right? Shannon, Less clutter. It, yes. And, I, you know, just to mention really quickly, I interviewed a, per, uh, a person in um, New York, and his daughter, age 13, was handing down 34 pairs of shoes. Right? I mean, that's overconsumption to the extreme. And he was saying, even though they can afford to have, you know, 34 pairs of shoes, that for him, it was teaching his daughter that you don't need 34 pairs of shoes, that you can actually, you know, it's your, she doesn't wear 34 pair, pairs of shoes, right? So it's like consuming. And, and think about the expense for parents to have double at each house, right? It's really cutting down and making us spend less. I just, I just think it's fabulous. I think we had, yes, another question. Pre, so you mentioned pre-purchase. Yes. When do you expect the website yeah. to go live? So um, you can go online to belonging.me and check out our, our pre-launch website. But um, in Q4, so I'm thinking close to like November is where we're going to hit that um, pre-purchase campaign and I'm so excited and I have so many families that are just like when is this gonna I am feeling like there's a lot of people in this room that want one like yeah (laughs) I think you're getting a really great response so any other let's final questions anybody else Aaron I think you had one and then we have one oh we have one in the theater let's let's go to the theater Ooh, I'm an Aaron too um, what are you actually calling the product, and what's the price point you want to sell it at? Excellent. Great question. So the company is Belonging, and our first product, this core product, is the Love My Stuff portable closet. And um, we are in the process right now of working with our manufacturers to determine the final price, um, but we expect it to fall in between 150 and $250 and there will be other models, some that have more elaborate things and some that are less elaborate. And then there are going to be a lot of add-on products so that you can, you know, you can have shelving, you can have webbing, you can have a, um, a, um, a bag to keep your wet laundry in, right? Because how many kids, I can't even tell you, like going with the wet laundry um, and shoes. And, you know, so again, the accessories will be as unique as the children. I think the customization is huge. I'm just like, it is. and stickers. <laughs> Make stickers right? happen. Yes, Erin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I have a lot of friends, um, even a friend in India that is watching tonight. So um, oh. I'm so grateful for everyone. Anne's Opportunity Knox there. group says hello. Thank Aaron, you. And your question. <laughs> How long have you wanted to be on the pub talk stage? That, that is a great question. So when I was part of Leadership Bend, I was actually sitting right here, and I was, like, copiously taking notes. And Les May looks over at me, and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm going to be up there someday. And that was, like, four years ago. I'm like, I am going to be up there on that stage someday. And so it's just such a joy to be here. And thank you guys all for being here for Oh, Anne, you absolutely crushed this. This This was a beautiful presentation. (laughs) Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you. And I just really appreciate your story. And I think sharing all the details of this entire journey is just so awesome to hear. So really well done. And I can't wait for you to come back and give us an update in a couple months. Thank you so much, Shannon. Yeah, thanks, Anne. Oh, I love you people. You're so smart and wonderful. All right, now for our final pitch, sponsored by Barrett Business Services, Inc., BBSI, who welcomes you back to Pub Talk. 
Big thanks to the EDCO team for creatively keeping the event alive and well during the pandemic. Here, here. BBSI solves problems and issues in the areas of human resources, workers' compensation, risk management, employee benefits, and payroll administration. BBSI's goal is to increase your profitability, maximize employee productivity, reduce time spent on transactional HR activities, reduce employment-related liability, and ultimately lower labor costs. Eric Strobel sits on the EDCO board and has placed many of our staff over the years since he himself worked for EDCO. And Central Oregon Community College, COCC. Employers, your next great hire is graduating from COCC. Our post-COVID economy will demand practical skills and a diverse workforce with relevant hands-on training. Central Oregon Community College is helping hundreds of capable graduates train quickly for a new career. From Horizon Air to St. Charles Health System, Facebook's data center to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, COCC grads are ready to work for Central Oregon. Contact COCC's president, Dr. Lori Chesley, to learn how your community college can support your hiring goals. Pitch number three, Chief Awesome Officer Jason Weiner is not new to the Pub Talk stage, but he's back to share his latest project, Race Manager. Race Manager is a software company that enables athletes to compete on real-world courses in a socially distanced and virtualized setting. This one-stop solution powers event management, participant management, timing and scoring, and grassroots commerce sponsorships. The team is led by a serial founder slash CTO from Silicon Valley and a lead sports-centric product, marketing, and operations executives. Launched late last year, they expect to see 100,000 race entries by the end of 2021. So come on up and tell us more, Jason. Where are you? Sorry, I'm a little limpy. I'm trying the Mission Farms. Um, so I broke my leg, broke my tibia at Batchy right before the big dump this year. Just trying it. Just had a big PT session this morning. Had a big myofascial release session after that. Feels pretty good. I was standing back there. I was shaking a little bit. Feeling, I'm not shaking now, so I guess I'm doing all right. Um, so hi, friends. I'm Jason Weiner. I'm, <clears throat> I'm super excited to share with you Race Manager. Um, it's a new and wait for it. Novel, get it, eh? <laughs> Too early. Um, way to create races for real people on real courses in real life. So first, a little bit about me. Um, I've been a serial startup guy for 25 years. Um, I came out of Silicon Valley. I've started seven companies of my own. I've raised venture for two of them. Um, one of them is still in existence today, which has been going on about 10 years now. We do about a billion pages a month. Um, on a website, we do 150 million active users. It's an educational product that I started with the first executive from Yahoo. Um, pretty cool product. Um, the, the original founding team is all um, kind of exited, transitioned off, and we've all gone on to other things. Um, I've also advised, advised about 20 or so other startups, um, including some startups in this room. Um, so my family and I moved to Bend about three and a half years ago. So I guess in the words of the Mount Bachelor Conditions Facebook page makes me a regular, it makes me a local, so I can put the Ben sucks, don't move here sticker <laughs> on the back of my car and yell at everybody coming from California and Washington. Um, that being said, I try to keep myself um, injected in the, um, in the local startup scene. I'm the president of Bentech, which if you don't know what Bentech is, it's a quick shill. Um, it's probably the coolest startup hub um, in Bend. We, um, we're a co-working space in the 1001 Tech Center. Um, before the pandemic, there were always big contingents of Ben Techers in, um, in pub talks. And um, it's pretty cool. If you get a chance, come by. We're one of the few co-working spaces that are absolutely packed. We're at capacity, and we can't actually take any more desks or offices, which is cool considering what's been going on for the last 18 or so months. But so why I'm here. Um, so unless you've been camping off grid for the last 15 months, you know that the last 15 months has sucked. It's not been very good. Um, if you, who likes to cycle, who likes to run trail, race trail, anybody? Raise your hand. Yeah, sucked even more for you. So <laughs> literally, um, COVID has stopped racing across the globe 
for everybody. And it, it hasn't been great. Events that we've all signed up for, I signed up for 70.3 Hawaii two years ago, or I guess last year. Um, they, they deferred it, and then they had to defer it again. Um, it's, it's been kind of a bummer deal. Um, but something really exciting happened last year. So Ten Barrel Brewing put on a, a virtual, virtual cross country and mountain biking race called Riding Solo, which was named after one of their beers. And it was, the idea around it was that you would go off and ride a real course with real people in a basically about three weeks time and you were scored on a virtual leaderboard. You just couldn't do it at the same time as anybody else. You had to keep six feet apart and you could enter anywhere on the course and wherever, wherever you started was your finish line. It was a massive success. Hundreds of people signed up and this was June of last year and people just came out in droves because you could do it on your own time. You could do it before you got on your Zoom calls for the day. You could do it before you had to you know, teach your kids school. You could do it at night after you put everybody to bed before the sun went down and the mountain lions came out or cougars came out. Um, <laughs> but you could do it on your own time, which was also pretty interesting. And you could do it as many times as you wanted over the course of the, the race window. So the race window in this case was several weeks and your best effort counted for your final position in the race. And there were prizes and we saw really cool people come in and literally 200 people signed up. And there were thousands of entries that were, that race entries that, I'm sorry, race efforts that were submitted over the course of those weeks. So all you needed was your Apple Watch, your Apple phone, your, Gar your, um, your Garmin device, your Wahoo device, whatever you could use to use a GPS tracker and you submitted it. And that was how you, how you justified your position on a leaderboard. So the process of that was extraordinarily difficult to manage. So um, the head of events over at Ten Barrel, because they had no other events to manage at the time, it became her full-time job for a month. So she would receive screenshots of people's watches, people's phones, people's Strava feed, and she would have to figure out, did they do the course? Did they do the course right? What was their time? And then put it into a Google Sheet and then tabulate that, sort it, and that was the final um, finishing position for people. And it turned into a full-time job for her. And it was, it, was a bad deal. It was like it was awesome for the for the participants, but for the back end, it was terrible. So, I the last time I was up here three years ago, I pitched a company called Hyperdrive, which focuses on connected car technology. Which means we connect to the car and we capture telemetry and we do timing and scoring associated with that to focus on fuel economy and improving the way you consume fuel. But what was interesting about the bike portion of this is that we could actually apply our technology. In a, in a COVID friendly way to allow people to automatically submit their times. So we could accept it through the Garmin's, the Wahoo's, the Suntos, the Polar's, the Fitbit's um, or Strava. And so we approached 10 Barrel and we said, hey, let's, we'd love to sponsor this. We'll sponsor it, you know, just put our logo on it and we'll, um, we, we would love to just help you. And it turned into over the course of July to about September, a point where we took over the race and they're like, why don't we just let you have it and we're gonna pay you to title sponsor it like they do for Hella Big Air or any of the other events that are at Batchy. Um, so fast forward, October of last year, we ran the second riding solo. And so what is, what is Race Manager? So Race Manager is a turnkey race platform that enables anyone to create and run real time events, real live events in minutes on real courses. All you need is a race course that you can come up with. You can literally use like something like Map My Run. You draw it in our interface. It's up in seconds. Um, you need participants. That's it. So if you have friends, you can literally create a race in a couple minutes. Um, as a participant, you then race on your own schedule. So you're not getting up at 8 a.m. on Sunday and going bar to bar with hundreds of people in a run or in a bike race or a schemo race, a cross country race. It doesn't matter. As long as we have a course, and as long as we have participants, and as long as we have ways to track you, you have a way to participate. And so the neat thing is you, you can do this event as many times as you want in a race window. Most of our race, race windows really kind of operate on a one-week time frame. We normally go from Sunday at 12.01 a.m. to Saturday at 11.59 p.m. And your best efforts, you can do one or two or five or seven event efforts over the course of that week, and your best effort is, the, is your finishing position. Um, the timing and scoring is automatic. So as long as you have the device, 
If you have a Garmin device, you have a Polar device, you have a Sunto device, you use Strava, you use the Apple Watch or Apple Health, it works automatically. In the words of Steve Jobs, it just works. Um, you get instant email notifications so when somebody bumps you off the leaderboard. So if somebody actually moves you from eighth to ninth, you see how far back you are in your age group, in the category, in the gender overall. It doesn't matter. We have, a, we have ontology that will send you the most pertinent um, change of race position email to your email. Um, you, on the back end, as a race organizer, we handle all the waivers. We handle all the liability releases. If you want to charge for races, we got you. If you want to do cool, unlockable perks, this is where we stand out. So when you look at something like an active.com or a run sign up, they're cool platforms, but you just, you got your timing and scoring, you plug it in, you got this leaderboard, but really you walk away, you got your swag bag, it's pretty neat, but you don't really have anything to go do as soon as you have the race, as soon as you've left the village, if the village exists. So what we, are, what we allow participants to do and sponsors to do are unlock perks instantly using the event. So I go ride fun or tiddlywinks on my mountain bike. As soon as I finish and I sink, I can go to Thump and get a 12 ounce coffee, just showing the app, or showing the, the web page. I can go to 10 Barrel and get a $5 pub coupon. Um, I have a $5 pub coupon to use for people under 21. I can go get a, you know, it comes off of my bill. If it's, if it's an adult, you can get yourself a, a frosty beverage, which is pretty rad. Um, you have this ability to engage local sponsors, which in COVID is something that people really don't have a good grasp on. Like we're trying to, we, we need to drive traffic to local businesses because local businesses are hurting. You know, up until this week, we really didn't have a way to be in a room like this. There was very limited seating. There was very limited flow and business through these businesses. Um, so we, we help release that pressure. So boil it down. Race manager is a simple turnkey way to race in the real world without the massive logistics usually required for events. You can stand up awesome events in minutes and create incredible experiences for, for your participants and for your sponsors. So who cares? Like, that's neat, but who's gonna use it? First, you. You can create races against your friends, whether it's schemo, so you're, you're climbing, you know, climbing the, the, the uphill route at Bachelor, you're coming down, I don't know, um, something. I'm not going to mention the route because I, that's where I broke my leg. Um, <laughs> that, that just brought me back way too much, sorry. Um, but you can create a, a friend race around the Deschutes River Trail. You can do fun or tiddly rinks. You can do Ben's Voodoo Fills on a mountain bike. You can go up and down Skyliners, which is also awesome. For professional race organizers, you can create slick, revenue-generating sites and, and events that build brand affinity drive local engagement, and literally are wins across the board for, for your participants. Some of the most interesting things that we had happen with the riding cell the last, last October, well, we had people who never care about racing. They're like, I don't race. Racing sucks. It's not for me. And we had those people literally enter multiple times, like, I need to enter again. Do I still have time? And we'd get these really kind of weird random emails like through our support system. But they were like, I want to go again. Do I have time? I'm like, yeah, you've got time. You've got two more days. And as you got closer to the end of the window, you watched the times plummet. So in October, particularly, we had Jesse Thomas, who's an Ironman champion. We had Emma Marnin, who's a live sponsored writer. We had pros come in and just literally send it. And they would send it on Wednesday, and then they would send it on Thursday, and then they would send it again on Friday. And you watch the times tumble. And as a, as a, as a passive viewer, it was exciting. So you're actually watching people race and you're watching people go back out because they want to get one more last effort into the race. So it's pretty cool. When you look at the, the, the landscape of racing, there are over 30,000 organized cycling and running events every year. There are 60 million runners and cyclists every year that participate in these events. None of them, or very few of them right now, Ben Marathon's a great example, didn't happen because Ben couldn't issue the permit. You can't race right now. And even more importantly, when you can race, this opens a way for you to increase the, the throughput of your event. So instead of having a single day event, you can now have training leading up to the event, or you can bookend the event and say, well, we're gonna do the virtual, we're gonna do the race manager event leading up to the single day event. And then the people on the single day event will be classified and they'll get the, you know, get the trophies specially for that day. But you can have everybody classified in the same fashion across not just the, the lead up, but also the race day event. Um, 
so why are we different? There's no simple way to create races from the ground up, from the course up. You can't just draw a course and you can't just set up a race and set up a time frame and set up like, here are the categories and send it out to your friends. We solve that. Ra running races is cumbersome. You've got permits, logistics, timing and scoring. We're the one-stop solution for that. We're literally a software as a service solution to handle all of that. Third, the participants race the courses the way they want, when they want, and as many times as they want with their best effort counting. So it's a more engaging experience than just the one, the one experience where you, you get the day of and either you have a great race or you don't have a great race. But if you think about something like the Sunnyside Tuesday ride, you can go out and start to see how you compare to other people. Even if you don't make it to Sunnyside at 5.30, you can go at 6.30 and ride later and see how you compared against Matt Lieto and Chris Lieto and everybody else that's, that's, that are the pros and can see how you compare against them on a leaderboard, which is pretty cool. And then finally, the local retailer activation. So when you go do a course, you actually get to unlock something that you can go use instantly. You can go get Thump coffees. We get 750 cups of coffee from Thump every month for people to go in. What's even cooler is we've been running these races since October, and we have a 30% redemption rate of people who have unlocked perks. In local retail, that is unheard of when you talk about coupons or in a way to drive people to local retail. So you have this package that is unbelievable. So last October, we ran Riding Solo. We also ran a running race called Running Solo, which ran through the Deschutes River Trail. It ran through Tethero. It ran through Northwest Crossing. It ran up Pilot Butte. We had 667 entries in the event. We logged over 1,080 hours and 10,000 miles of activities over the course of that four-week period. It was a massive, massive success. In November, we spun it off of the company Hyperdrive, which I pitched up here three years ago, and it now boasts a team of 10 that are dedicated to making this, this company successful, including the original head of marketing for Power Bar. We have people who are, have worked on the sites for Rock Shocks, for Specialized, for the Olympic Games. We have people from the Ironman, we have people from Zwift, all included in this team. And we've run a number of events, including if, I don't know if anybody's hiked a Butte with the Big Butte Challenge with Cascade Relays, right there. We've done, the Cascade Relays has done a, an event called the Big Butte Challenge, which was five buttes in and around Bend over the last seven or eight weeks. Um, each time you crest a butte, Deschutes, Wild Ride, BBC, Ten Barrel. You can go and you unlock a beer at one of these. They each sponsor a butte. You can go get your beer as soon as you get down. We had almost 2,000 entries wow. with that event. Literally, they bought buffs and did the deals with the, with, the, with the breweries, and that was the extent of the logistics because of the platform. So who are our competitors? So Strava, maybe. Map My Run, maybe. Ride with GPS, maybe. Nobody really has a, a kind of like a holistic solution to this problem. Red Bull has tried to dip, dip their toes in this solution in this in this space most recently with a a lap counter um, at Glen Helen in California, but no nobody's really doing it at our scale. So the usability, the the lack of features that that most of the other solutions have out there really gives us our edge. So why are we better? We we've built it from the ground up to be the next generation race course participant management and local sponsor activation platform. Our solution makes making launching an event simple. So we have a, for, on the personal side, you can launch a, a personal event literally in 30 seconds. It comes down to like importing a, a, an activity from Strava or a course, you can bring in, in a Zwift course even, and you invite your friends and you've got as many friends as you want, the race is live. You just can't charge for it as a personal race, but it's all free. Our team is world class. Like I said, we've got teams with people who have worked on brands like Zwift, Iron Man, Power Bar, the Olympic Games, Specialized, Rock Shocks. I mean, you kind of name it, we've, we've got the sports pedigree. We drive actual measurable commerce, which is the biggest thing that, that races can't do well. We can measure. We know that there's a 30.9% redemption rate for the Big Butte Challenge. Nobody else can say that when they walk up to the, to the when, a, when one of their participants walks up to the cash wrap at Thump. If you have the right idea and decent marketing, you can literally stand up at an event that will create $25,000 a month with no overhead. Mm. It's pretty awesome. So what are our pub talk asks? First, go hike a butte if you get a chance. Big Butte Challenge ends on the 31st. 
Um, you can get yourself a beer, you get yourself a buff. It's pretty cheap, it's a lot of fun. People, people dig it. It's bigbutte.racemanager.app. Um, second, we launched registration for 10 Barrels Riding Solo, the, the June series, which is some really kick-ass um, courses. So even if you're not comfortable on a mountain bike, we've got something for you. That's ridingsolo.me. Um, and if you use the coupon code PUBTALK, that's good for 50% off. Um, and we even have early entry discounts right now up until National Trail Day, which is June 5th. Um, but you still get 50% off of anything you want to enter up until June 5th. Um, and finally, if you know somebody who wants to do local retail activation, if you, want, if you know somebody who wants to run some cool events, holler. Um, I'm Jason at racemanager.app. And if you want to just chat or pick my brain or talk about how CBD could be in the hands of thousands of people, holler. Um, that's it. And Thanks, that's Jason. That's great. This is so cool. I love it. My favorite part of your talk was when you were like, the Wahoo, the Strava, the Fitbit, the blah. I'm like, what, the what? <laughs> The what, the what, Jason? Um, so, okay, so I feel like there's lots of other applications for this. Have you thought about like youth races or um, like cruisingsolo.com, just like a slow ride through town or something like that? <laughs> just yeah, totally. So, um, so a, a good example is the the big Beat, the big Beat challenge or riding solo. Riding solo. If you're under 19, um, you get in for free. Ben kids with the exclamation point. So if you have a kid under 19, over 10 for insurance reasons. They can race for free. Bend kids with an exclamation point. 100% off. That's all good. And we have some really kick-ass prizes. So we've raised um, in this, this particular tranche um, over $25,000 in sponsorships for, for this tranche of, of events. We have everything from video bike fits to, um, to 10, barrel, 10 barrel beers to coffees to um, rentals from Pine Mountain. Um, we've got acupuncture. We've got So you literally... Everybody's eligible to this. And then what's really neat is there's a, there's a shootout at the end, which is a you and nine of your best friends go with a pro and a, and a handcrafted experience at the mountain. And you get to ride. You get to get, it's catered. It's beard. Um, and it's just it's something you, you can't get anywhere else in the world. A shootout? <laughs> Hello. Aaron. Jason, what is your revenue model and pricing strategy? Thanks, Cameron. So we charge $5 per entry, flat. And so every month that we've been in existence since, so we started doing these, these races in October of last year. Every month since October of last year, we have been revenue positive. Um, we generate revenue as a percent, or not a percentage, but as a flat $5 per entry. So if there's, in the case of riding solo, there are four races or four stages. Um, you pay anywhere from 20 to $25 for, for a race entry unless you buy it in bulk, no matter what. Race manager makes $5 per every entry, and that's it. It's a flat deal. It's all baked in. Um, that includes your waivers. That includes generating your revenue. You have to pay the Stripe fees if you're going to recognize revenue through through a third party through a third party party processor. But it's five bucks. That's awesome. Yes. Have you approached any of the high schools or college like that have mountain biking teams or? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, so we um so the the middle schools up, all the way through high school is, is governed by an organization called NICA, and NICA is um, we've we've had a, a number of NICA NICA participants in not just riding solo last year but in, in some of the races this year. Um, it's we don't do um, youth centric races yet, but we do we do support youth in any way shape or form because a lot of a lot of ways, the youth can kick the, kick the crap out of like the category three men and women. So. Which is awesome. <laughs> With their healthy joints. Yes, in the back. Um, first of all, do the big beat challenge. It's super fun. We're enjoying all the races. I didn't show you. You you didn't you didn't come because of me, by the way. <laughs> um, but like what is your guys like greatest plan almost from an exit standpoint? Like if Strava looks at you, is it like are you a feature that they buy? And is that a win? Or do Okay. So do you have like an exit strategy for development for if, if you're going to get purchased by something like Strava? Do you want to stand alone? What's your kind of big vision for this thing? Great question. Yes. We, we don't ex anticipate being around for more than two years, to be perfectly honest. So the model around what we've done is our 
the, the closest comparison is a company called Race Roster that was purchased in October, on Halloween of 2019 for 5X revenue. And they were a registration platform. They were bought by ASICs similar to RunKeeper, which I stupidly didn't be, decide to become the CTO of. And, but the, the interesting, which was also bought by ASICs, which was the, the digression. The, the interesting part there is that they bought it for 5X revenue. They bought it for $28 million. So our goal with 100,000 participants is to get us somewhere around a half million to a million dollar run rate and at a minimum get taken out for around 5X of that. I'd say that's a pretty good plan, Jason. I think you really Jason. thought that through. Okay, Shannon, any other questions? we have question? a couple of questions in <laughs> yes. the theater. Yes, let's hear it. Hi, Jason. Uh, my question is, with normal races, uh, whoever's putting it on probably has to get a permit or something like that. So what is the, you know, what is the regulatory environment for permitting and things like that with these races that either your platform is facilitating or you guys are running yourself? Do you want to repeat it? Or can, oh, fair enough. So it's, it's a, that's a wonderful question. So, and it's something that's come up several times. Because of the nature of our courses and 95% and of our races, with the exception of the Big Butte Challenge, which isn't on private property or forest service property or Ben's Park and Rec, we run loops. And by running a loop, we can, we can avoid the majority of permitting because we don't have a congregation point. We don't need toilets. We don't need permits. We're not gonna have impact on a particular point um, in a park or on a trailhead. So the neat thing about our technology is you, when you, you roll up to, to Fun or Tiddlywink, it's a great, great example, so you've got it goes along, um, along Century Drive, and it turns around um, right at Winoga and come, kind of comes up towards Kiwa, comes back down towards Green Gate, which is the, where the Paintball Paradise sign is, if you're not familiar. But you can enter at Green Gate, which is down the lowest point of the course, or you can enter at Winoga, or you can drive into the access road to go up to Tiddlywinks and enter there. By doing that, you're alleviating the need for congregation points you're not having people have impact on a particular, one particular point on the course. And then wherever you've entered, our technology knows that as soon as you've entered that point, we don't stop scoring until you come back to that point. And if you don't come back to that point, you don't get counted. So it's, But does it's anybody kind of check on them? Like if they don't ever show up, like, <laughs> is there a backup plan? That's a joke. Yeah. OK. Um, I think, was there another question in the theater? Yes, one more. Hi. Um, I'm one, one butte yeah. away from completing the big butte challenge. I think you need to be a little closer to the microphone. You want to get a oh. little bit of your lip gloss on it. Really? Yeah. Is that better? There you go. Okay. <laughs> I'm one butte away from finishing the big butte challenge, and yes. after going up gray butte, I feel like I deserve more than a buff. <laughs> well, but you got four beers and four cups of coffee. And some killer glutes. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, if you did black butte, the black butte... Not until yet. like this week, Black Butte has been like under massive snow. So like getting to the getting to the end of the course of Black Butte has been a challenge. Like it's it's been like you we had these guys come out and do all five buttes on the first day and they so we have the ability to upload videos or upload photos and and that's how you also unlock the the um, it's an honor system with the Big Butte challenge. But you upload the photos of the video uh, photos of the Big Butte of whatever buttes you're doing. And we had these guys literally just like in the course of like six hours to all five buttes, it's Black, Gray, Bessie, Aubrey, and Pilot. And it's just like, oh my God, are you guys nut? Yes, like, yes, yes. But like, my, my, actually it's not a question, it's just a oh. user. It's just like a three star review. Point, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, well, but, so, and actually to, to answer that, <laughs> we don't own this race. The Cascade Relays owns this race. We power the technology. They took care of all of the swag. They took care of all of the unlockable perks with the exception of Thump, which we brought to the table, and Tenbro, which we brought to the table. So Your beef is with Cascade Relay. Well, come over here. No, 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 no. I just, uh, to, to, to log in, I have to so, click have? and get a link through my email every time to log oh. in. Oh, okay. So it's a user, it is technology. Watch your, watch so class. there's a, okay, so the, use, the, the issue is she's logging in multiple times. Anyone else? Boop. Was there anything else from the theater? You have a yeah, okay, we have one live. So I, um, I ride every Sunday. I ride to the last, last Sunday. And I ride with so people. They have garments. I, I clock on my Apple Watch. I see huge differences in vertical, in time, and, and in distance. So how do you manage that? 
That's not cool. So she says she rides with two friends. They're on Garmin. She's on Apple Watch. There's huge um, variations between their results. Right. Like it's a significant. You no, know, this is legitimate. Yeah. yeah. No, it's. So right. are you like? How are you addressing this? Yeah. So we actually have to do with with BYO device. So um, when you when you use an Apple device, we snap you to the to the actual course to the closest point that you can that you can be on the course, and we have some some math that allows you to, to normalize everybody. And then, you know, because we're, we're in charge of timing and scoring, if we, we do see cases where your Strava or your Apple, your Apple Health, you know, tr um, um, log will not match up to what we see because we have start finish zones, we have making sure that you're within, because if, so there are a couple of rules that we, we follow. One, if you aggregate more than 200 meters off course, you're excluded. If you do, if you upload or you sync more than 24 hours outside of the race of, of the time you've started your effort, you're excluded. Um, so if you go in in particular with a particular racer, who's if you're if you're drafting, you're within six feet, you're excluded for safety. Um, but so, so is there like a calibration for these devices? Yeah. So we use this is we ludicrous. Use, so we use map we use maps from um, from not just um, Google, but we also use um, Mapbox, um, and we also use our own homebrewed mapping technology that allows us to have pretty high resolution when it comes to snapping. And we're, we haven't had many complaints. Um, I think in, in the original riding solo, we had like a 95% happy and success rate with customer support out of 272 um, customer support inquiries, so. Okay, I like the way you said math. It was like math, some math. Science, well, we're all yeah, we have some science. We're all doing science, yeah. yes, we are all doing science. Um, okay, I do wanna say, love your, also you're very good at using um, yeah. like slang words. But I didn't go to the PG-13, you know. So <laughs> no, you didn't. I Actually, you said. Sucks. Well, you said suck. You said kick ass twice. Yeah, but kick ass. I know. I felt like, I felt that one. I'm going to say, you know, my besties here in town, we're going to race down to Lululemon this weekend. We should set something up and unlock some perks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is awesome, Jason. Thank Such you. a pleasure. I love your idea. I think there's so many applications. I hope you sell this thing for 10x. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thanks for being here. All right, you got, God, I don't want to say good night. Y'all are so fun. It's such a beautiful crowd. Um, thank you, Jason. And for a quick update from Boundless, y'all remember Boundless, Ian Gregg, pilot and co-founder that was going to take us all for Korean barbecue in the San Juan Islands uh, two months ago. So their first plane arrived, and they are almost ready to start booking flights. And so they, they issued us a statement. Do you travel regularly for work? If so, have you considered flying direct? cutting your travel time in half, Boundless can help you find the right size aircraft, manage it, potentially realize substantial tax savings. So go to flyboundless.com to find out more information. I'm totally into it, and I do still want to go to San Juan Island. Um, we're ready when you are, Ian, so come pick us up. Um, we traded for, up for tonight's keynote. We, we, had, we decided to have extra pitches. Uh, how, how did that go? Did you, did you have a good time? Yeah, it's good, huh? It's a nice range. So we'll be back at it with the season's final pub talk event on June 24th, right here at McMenamin's, assuming everything, everyone was cool tonight. Um, in the meantime, REDI's annual luncheon is slated for June 16th at Deschutes County Fairgrounds in Redmond. So you'll go to redinfo.com for more information. And a little birdie told me that Edco's biggest event of the year, the annual luncheon, the one that was forced to postpone due to COVID, is actually getting rescheduled for July 15th which is a Thursday, nearly 500 had planned to attend in person, and that was during extreme risk, so we feel pretty excited about this huge business event finally coming back around. So we'll be at the River House. Um, Edco will also be celebrating turning 40, so we're going to take a wild weekend to Sonoma. Um, also, <laughs> that, that was also a joke. Watch for a its official relaunch in um, the next week if you haven't already gotten your tickets. Now, a reminder to be patient and kind as we open back back up. We're all adjusting to the new way forward. Constant change. Keep it up. Minimize your time on Facebook. And I will see you next month. Thanks so much. I'm Shannon Kelly. Good night. Thank you.